Today we're going to talk about scatter plots in Google Data Studio. So I have a table underneath. I'm using a data set which is the New York yellow taxi trips in 2021. Got a few uh, metrics in here for taxi vendors in the table. Number of trips, average fare, average tip, average toll, average extra, average surcharge and average tax. And I'm going to use a scatter plot because I want to explore the relationship between two metrics in the data set. So there's two scatter plots you can use, the normal scatter or the bubble. Really, bubble is just something that can come into a scatter plot. You can change it in style. So the normal scatter plot is grand to start off. So in the scatter plot, what you need to look at is the dimension and the two metrics. So you're looking on a dimension, the relationship between two metrics. I have record count and passenger count in at the moment. Not really the best to demonstrate this, so I'm going to change it up going to look at payment type so that there's all the different payment types and I'm going to look at total amount and fair amount so total amount is the fair plus all the extras which we see down below and fair amount is just the amount from a fair so I'm going to just rename the two fields so they come up properly on the scatter plot so I'm looking at the average total and the average fair and that should tell us all the things in between, which is on the table below. So I can click one of those points and that'll filter it on the table below to give me more detail on the difference between the average fare and the average total that's broken down into tip, toll, extra surcharge and tax. So we've got that for those five. And I'll go through just some of the style things you could do in a scatter plot. So the first thing is you can show the data labels on here. So two ways to really do this. You show the data labels on the chart, good for a small number of points, or you can color them and you have the color legend up above. And then you can change those values here um, if you wanted to change the colors. And you can kind of change the different bubble orders and the colors there as well. But we're going to change the bubble effect into none. And it's going to show you what you can put in in terms of reference lines. So there's a reference line here. We can put an average in the total. And then we can also put an average in the um, fair. So right now we've got a cross. And we could visualize a line that goes through that. But what's good about Data Studio is that instead of that, we can just go straight and put in a trend line automatically in the graph itself. So you can just do a linear trend line here. There's different functionalities for this trend line. You can do di different flavors of lines, but normally the trend line is the best if you're just looking at two attributes. Different other things you can do in the style, you can show the axis, you can reverse the axis. Uh, down into grid, you can change a couple of colors here. So normally for each aspect, they're going to have their own styling tips within that. That's for the grid. So that is the grid colors. And this is the um, color of the actual grid in here. And then we have kind of the pixel size on the, on the labels. And then we can go down into the legend here. So you can change the legend to wherever you want it. You can also orientate that legend left, right, or in the center. And then finally, um, you can go down and change kind of the background and borders. There are other things we'll do in style, but we need to show you those in a different way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring a bigger, um, a bigger dimension in here. It's the drop off location. So there's more drop off locations than there is payment types. So you see, I've got a lot of, um, I've got a lot of, of bubbles in here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring the tip amount into the size of the bubble here and I need to turn this to average because everything is on that average scale and you can see that this is fairly difficult to discern anything from so what I can do is come back into style and I can reduce down that bubble size so you've got so you've got a little bit of a, a better idea what your outliers are you can filter on any of those bubbles and that'll tell you everything down below so if there's an outlier like this you can see why it's an outlier on the line you can reduce down the number of bubbles, but always keep in mind that you want to f you want to sort on the order of what you want your bubbles to be. So essentially, I want the most records to be my bubbles in a descending order, so that any of these points are highly weighted. So I've got like eight hundred or seven hundred eighty two thousand on that point. On the second point, I've still got seven hundred seventy nine thousand. So just make sure you're not 
looking at top 10 inconsequential uh, bubbles when you do this. So I'm going to bring back up to 550 and kind of take my tip amount out of there as well. So we're back to normal now. And then what we can do is we can do a drill down. So I've got drop off location here and I've pick up location as well. So you can drill down in two ways. You can drill down using this up and down arrow. This will change the dimension. And then when you actually click into a point, you can drill down on that point. So now I can see my pick up location by that one drop off location that I've filtered down on. And this is probably an area where because the numbers of observations get so low, you might want to just see the top five here. So pick up location 132 from that drop off location, I still have uh, 95 data points there. So the next thing uh, and a quite useful thing is you can do a, um, you can do a comparison date range as long as you have a date range there and date ranges on your on your bubble chart, I can compare to the previous period here. So I'm looking at one month of September and this is comparing to the previous month. And it does look a bit like, especially down here, it looks a bit uh, bunched up. But what you can do is when you pick a data point itself, all the other data points disappear other than that data point and its comparison data point. So you can see very clearly what your comparison data points here. And if you're doing a comparison, the bubble color styling becomes quite important there because then you can you can obviously discern the different colors. So that's the scatter plot video for Data Studio. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you very soon for another Data Studio tutorial.